just arrived in on Allen. site in Allen, <laughs> about to do another theater room. Uh, this is going to be pretty cool. It's a Eclipse a professional series, a uh, 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos system with a 145 inch screen and an Epson uh, 4050 powering uh, the projection side and we're running everything through a Denon 6500. The guys are working on right now getting everything un loaded out of the truck and onto this mat here at the front door. Whenever we do an installation, we want to make sure that we protect your home and don't scratch up your floors. So the guys are putting everything on that moving blanket. And then we're going to put on shoe covers. Make sure to protect your floors. And whenever we're done, we'll vacuum everything up. So I'm gonna go up to the meeting room now. And once we get all of our products up there, I'll show you the exact models as well as the room that we're gonna be working with. Thanks for watching. Okay guys, uh, we just got all of the equipment upstairs and I wanna show you the exact products and models that we're gonna be using in this space, as well as the space itself. We got Lucky, this room is pre-wired and this was done by the builder. So basically we just gotta go around the room, pop out all the boxes, cut our holes and get the speakers put into place. The models that we're gonna be using for the in walls are the Pro 16 RWs. It's the professional series from Klipsch, six inch woofers. And we're gonna check and see on the center speaker if we can do the RP640 or if we can do the, uh, the Pro 250 RPW, dependent on stud location. For the overhead Atmos, we're gonna be using the Pro 16 RCs. Grayson just unboxed the um, Pro 16 RW. You can see this has the ceramic metallic woofer and the 90 by 90 rotatable horn. I like these because the entire, not just the tweeter, but the whole horn is rotatable. So you can direct that towards your target seating area. Um, you got treble and bass adjustments as well on the front of the speaker. Um, this is the new design that just came out last year. This is the completely re-engineered uh, model. Uh, you can see it has a really nice big magnet structure here on the back. Gold plated. Uh, yeah, gold plated push, push terminals. terminals. It's a very well built quality speaker. Grayson's gonna unbox the uh, 16 RC so you can see that as well. Manuals, cutouts. So one thing you'll notice whenever um, he's unboxing this, which is really cool, is that Eclipse actually includes these magnetic little cover plates with their professional series. And this is nice because we can install the speakers and then this just clings to it. And then you can just take your, your sprayer for paint and just spray the wall down. Comes with a square grill in case you're an amateur and you mess up. <laughs> or if you just like. Or you the, like a square look. Yeah, go you with like your in walls, look. you know. Circle grill. And this is the speaker. Once again. See a lot of the same characteristics here. Thin wall. Yeah, the whole this entire one? woofer. The whole woofer and tweeter is aimable. Which is very helpful. Very impressive. And uh, the tweeter as well, like you said. Yep. So you can really get these. Hone in. Yeah, you can and hone them in on your target seating say area. Say you're pre-wired and not, not the best spot, you can really get a nice angle and point it towards your target audience. As well Showing as the, the treble. And on the back, nice magnet. Look at that. It's very impressive. Gold plated push terminals as well. Heavy magnet. Yeah. So, this is the uh, Pro 16 RC in ceiling and wall. And let me, well, I'll finish off with the products. You have the SPO 120 sub. This is a 12 inch front firing ported subwoofer. This is the projector we're using, the Pro Cinema 4050. We got some other little things like surge protection here as well as the universal remote we're using the Harmony Pro. Um, over here is the model of the projector screen that we're using. It's the Dragonfly 145 inch high contrast gray screen. This is very nice because you can still have a little bit of light in the room. 
like this. Like I, he went ahead and painted the whole room dark, which is perfect. But if he wants to watch the TV with these sconces on, you won't even be able to tell that the lights are on. It's not gonna affect the image quality much. Uh, whereas if you have a white screen, you're gonna see that wash out pretty quickly. So if you look, Corey's already getting to work on our in ceilings. We have four overhead Atmos that are pre-wired right here, top mids, and then we got top rears here. I'm not sure if you guys can see. Let me try to give a little more light. There we go. Um, so those are the overhead Atmos. We got front left, front right, and then our center which is to be determined. We also have surround left and right, and then rear left and right. So seven channels is for Dolby Digital, all at ear level, which are what these ones on the wall are for. And then the dot one is the one subwoofer, the SBL that's gonna go here at the front of the room. Now this room is wired for two subs. There's one back here in this corner as well. So the customer can always make it a 7.2 system. Um, and then the four stands for our overhead Atmos, which we have four. So that's 7.1.4 is the configuration that we're using here today. So we're gonna go ahead and get to work on this guys. And we'll show you, you know, how the work is completed in case you guys are purchasing this product out of state. It'll help make your life a little bit easier as you're completing the work. Um, the guys are going to start by knocking all these boxes out of the studs to begin with and then they're going to trace out which you can see Corey's doing here behind me on the ceiling and then on the walls where the speaker is going to go and then cut the sheetrock and get the speaker installed in the wall. Thanks for watching. All right guys check it out you can see Grayson just got our first hole cut this is where the speaker is going to go. The box the way this works guys is this box gets nailed in like that. And when the house is being built. Yeah, when the home's being built. So basically you just pop that box out and then you cut your hole and then strip down your wire, which Gracie's about to do. And as you can see, the customer didn't take the plates off or whoever painted the room beforehand. And now they run the risk of when I put this speaker in the wall that it's not gonna fully cover that which I think it will in this situation, but it's always best practice to pull the plates off whenever you're painting the wall, just so that everything, including underneath the plates, is covered in paint, not the old color of the wall. And as you can see back here, this is actually our subline, yep. RG6 coax. And that's going down to here, which we're gonna use that line. Yep. Once you feel the resistance, you know you're in. Essentially what we're doing is we're actually my 16 RC in here? putting the no. uh, speaker oh, attached to the back bracket into the wall. Yeah, so those toggle bolts are going like this and clamping right on to, Grayson actually drilled out little pilot holes on the side of the stud, just shallow, not the full stud length, but just a little bit so that they can grab onto the stud. And then we're gonna rotate that tweeter towards our target seating area. Um, then the grill's gonna go on there. Very nice. This one had four and I noticed it because when I first put it in, it grabbed that stud. Yeah, exactly. so, so here's I just an example of the end ceiling speaker being installed. See how Corey's made all the toggles clamp onto the sheetrock. The next thing is you're gonna actually strip back your wire and then insert the speaker into the hole. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. The manufacturer recommends doing it like Corey's doing it right now, which is putting the back bracket in first and then inserting the speaker and then tightening down the screws. Uh, Grayson did it the other way. <laughs> that is a little bit faster, but still gets the job done. Just like that. And then you hang the speaker right on those hooks. Once the speaker is in the locked position, then you're just gonna screw it down in the place. Like that. You wanna make sure that you don't over torque it. Perfect. 
All right, then we're gonna take our speaker grill and insert it onto the speaker. And these are magnetic, they just cling right on. Very nice. And then we'll probably just take a paper towel and wipe down the ceiling and all the walls whenever we're done. But you can see we're moving right along. Grayson has one of the in walls in and Corey has one of the in ceilings in. Perfect. You really like getting dirty, huh? Okay guys, so things, uh, you know, are a little less than ideal here. Uh, we actually went to cut in this in-ceiling speaker termination and the builder kind of made a little mistake. Let's just call it that. <laughs> uh, the pre-wired location was actually directly over a gas line. Check it out. Yep. And so, this is green media, not green plumbing or gas. Yeah, so there's not a whole lot we could do about that. Um, the home is brand new construction, so the customer is just gonna reach out to the builder and um, they will repair that sheetrock. And what we're gonna be doing is just moving it forward into the next stud pattern. We're gonna go investigate in the attic and just ensure that there's nothing else that could be in our way. But I'm gonna have to do it on both because we don't want this one at a different distance from that one. So we're gonna just repair this one that's pre-wired as well as this one that is already cut um, and then move them forward, which will actually be better anyways because these were a little bit close for Atmos. They're a little far forward in the room. Um, so we'll move them back and they'll just have those repaired. We're popping out a box. You check which side your stud's on. All right, it's not on that side. It's over here. Stick your flat head in. This is how I do it anyways. Go like that, get a nice pull, boom. And see how there's a nail there and there's a nail up here? You just put your flathead right there on the nail and it pulls the whole entire box and both nails out. It might be harder for you, but I've done this a couple times, so. True. <laughs> <laughs> you keep your plastic hands on the plastic so you don't get your speaker grill dirty with your musty hands you've been working with all day. Another tip from Grayson. Come back and wipe these big yeah. boards down. I've got some on the other side as well. All right, we're moving right along. One thing you guys will notice with our installs is we really pride ourselves on our work and we pride ourselves on keeping your home nice and clean. So the guys right now are just working on getting everything vacuumed up and getting all of the debris into boxes and taken out of the home. And uh, we'll get these last two in ceilings popped in and then start working on our projection. All right, guys, check it out. This little tool right here, you can pick it up from Home Depot, it makes your life a lot easier. You just basically shoot that right through the Smurf tube and it shoots out the other end over there where Corey is and we're gonna attach our HDMI as well as our Cat6 line for IR uh, to it and just pull it right on through. Okay guys, so uh, whenever you're getting ready to mount the projector, uh, this is the procedure that you take. Mount the top plate to the projector itself, put the, the actual mechanism that adjusts your tilt and level on, and then your pole, and then you're gonna take the top plate and actually mount it into the ceiling, preferably right into the stud on center right here. Um, now, depending on how the room is laid out and where your screen is, you may need to have stud here and two drywall anchors, like 100 pounders. But essentially what you're gonna do is measure the center of where the screen's gonna be on the wall. 
and you want the projector to sit dead center of the screen. If not, you'll end up with a keystone and we don't want a keystone adjustment. Even though it will work, we prefer to have a perfectly square image. Next thing is you want that projector lens to meet right at the top of the screen for optimal performance. So we're gonna go ahead and get this mounted. Yeah, so once you mark your center guys, then you're just gonna bolt the projector into the stud, which is either gonna be on the left or the right of these outlets, because this was pre-wired. It's on the front side, so we're gonna do two of the mounting points into the wood and the other two with 100 pound acres. Okay, you can see that the guys did a really nice job of getting that mounted into the studs, and then you got those 100 pound acres right there. That puppy's not going anywhere. The next thing we're gonna do is slide the projector right onto the mount. Corey has it right here. And these little bolts that are prefabbed on the mount just slide right in. Just like that. And then make sure that you lock it into place. And just like I showed you earlier, that pulling that little tab over makes it to where it can't get knocked off. If you forget to do that, there's a good possibility that that projector could fall off at any moment. So that's, that's an important thing to notate. Next thing we're gonna do is get the wires plugged in, IR sensor hooked up to the CAT6 cable, get a uh, surge protector on the ceiling and everything plugged in. That's 145 inches, baby. Guys did a good job getting that put together. This is a tab tension mount. See how they got the steel rod going through here? That way it ensures that over the life of the unit, there's never gonna be any sagging or wrinkling like some of the cheaper options out there where you get a little wrinklage in between the tab points. So next, the guys are prepping for a couple things in here. We're going to be one, mounting the bracket here into the studs up on the wall. We just measured everything out to ensure that it's gonna fit properly in relation to where we're gonna mount our center speaker, the RP640. In addition to that, you hear that noise in the background, Corey's working on toning out the lines and labeling them. You can hear it's coming from this up here. And what we would label that is a high rear and basically he's just gonna go through the entire room and do that to all the speakers. And me and Grayson are gonna go ahead and mount this up on the wall. And the Denon also comes with labels if you wanna use those on the wires. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, I do. Thanks for Where's that. those at? A little oh. easier. So you guys can see Grayson just got the Screw, the first screw mounted into the stud right there. So we're also gonna try to hit more studs if possible. And then you gotta do the same down here on this bottom bracket and it just hangs on there like a pitcher. All right guys, you can see Grayson did a very nice job of getting this mounted top and bottom. Next thing we're gonna do is mount the screen. Okay guys, once you get the projector screen actually mounted on the wall, on that top piece it's not locked in yet so what you do is you have to actually give it like a little bump up and in and then it hooks onto both the bottom and the top so Grayson's gonna lift up and I'm gonna push in just like that now if you see down here in the bottom kid can't come up and knock it off it's it's locked into place nice and solid Next thing we're going to do is just ensure that it's the same distance to both sides as well as level with earth. It's just bringing back memories, man. I haven't heard these songs in God knows how long. I don't know, man. I never really get sick of them. They're, they're good. They are good. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, 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 they're just classic. All right, guys. So what's going on right now is Grayson is working on calibrating the projector. And it's actually pretty simple if you follow these simple instructions. And it's just 
mount the projector center of the room at the top of the screen. After that, throw your level on it and make sure that it's level with earth going front to back. And then you're gonna level the top line at the top of the screen all the way across. Like you can see right now, Grayson has it a little low on the left. He's gonna pull that left side up and then the whole top will be level. After that, see how now the bottom right looks high? Basically the whole projector has to shift to the left and then you'll use the lens shift inside of the projector to actually level that out. So within, you know, a couple minutes, he should have it ready to rock and roll. You gotta go even further over it, right? Uh -huh. So what's going on is right now, the projector is skewed because the, the projector is so far facing that direction. He just has to face it back that way a little further. Right now, you're listening to where cinematic audio has been. Because we are so used to hearing sound this way, we don't notice that it is merely a fraction of what its potential could be. But what if sound could be extraordinary again? Wow, that turned out awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, this configuration is a Klipsch Professional Series 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos system. Uh, the installation turned out pretty good. Uh, the only issue that we ran into was that gas line that was installed right over the pre-wired location, but we got with the builder and they're gonna come and get that patched up. Everything else is just awesome. Uh, the customer is extremely satisfied. Audio, video performance is on point. Uh, you can see we have the 145 inch high contrast gray screen up here behind me from Dragonfly. Uh, we also have the Epson 4050 up here. This is like the best value uh, for this year. It just performs awesome at a very reasonable price point. I really uh, have been enjoying putting this into people's homes and seeing their reactions. Uh, we got all the wiring hidden in the wall. HDMIs are all up to spec, 18 gig, 4x4x4. Four by four by four. Um, everything search protected. I'll just do like a quick little sweep, tell you the model numbers, and uh, then we'll go ahead and get out of here, let the customer enjoy their evening. So we have the Pro 16 RWs all the way around. This was where the builder had a uh, um, whenever they went to paint the wall, they didn't do behind the plate, so that's showing, but that's gonna be touched up. Um, this is the actual unit itself. You got the 90 by 90 tracks of corn, the ceramic metallic woofer, and a nice magnetic grill. And then we have the 640, the RP640D on wall center speaker down here below. 16 RW there. We have the SPL. This is the 120 SW. This is a 12 inch sub ported subwoofer. 
The 16 RWs are for our surrounds and our surround rears. And then we also have them for our rears, our backs, surrounds. And then overhead, the customer opted to go with the square grills. You can see we have those as our high rears and high mids. Customer is pre-wired for one more sub over here in the corner. And he said he's probably gonna be adding that in. It'll get better dispersion through the space. Down here, we have the in command series, the 6500, powering up the whole system and processing the audio as well. We have a UBP800X or X800 Blu ray with a Roku Ultra and a Harmony Pro series. Everything is hardwired into the network switch. We like to do that to optimize performance. This is the Harmony remote. I like this because it's just one button press, guys. Let me take the light off. You can just come in here and hit one button on the screen, whether it's watch Roku, Blu-ray, or Chrome, and it fires everything up and turns it all to the correct input with that one button press. And it also has an app interface. The app interface is nice. There's no licensing or anything like that. For my out-of-state customers, I've been sending these out like crazy because you can program it yourself with just a cell phone. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, and it has a lot of automation features as well, like lighting, uh, HVAC, things like that, uh, that you've seen us integrate into some of our other theaters. Now, uh, th this is an example of our work. Uh, we are going to be continuing to do videos like this. I know you guys love it. We really appreciate all of your support and orders that you've been placing. If you'd like us to do something like this for you and you live in Dallas, we'd be happy to. Um, and if you don't live in Dallas, still give us a call. We have nationwide free shipping and a low price guarantee on all of these products as well as many other home theater products that you're probably needing for your home. So give us a call, shoot us an email, and uh, we'd be happy to help you out. If you like this video, just give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below. We're going to keep these videos coming. And if you'd like to be notified as soon as we put out a new one, you got to hit that subscribe button. I hope you guys liked the video. Thank you for watching.